Uh, is Sunday, August 23rd. And welcome to everybody here to our service today, including those who are watching by way of uh, videotape. Uh, we remind those in the sanctuary that face masks are required at all times and to please remain in your current seats until dismissed by an usher during the last hymn. Uh, tithe and offering baskets are located in the back of the sanctuary in case you choose to make a donation that way. Uh, we ask that you register your attendance today by texting your names to the phone number displayed on the screens, 302-265-0225. Uh, if you do not have that capability, maybe someone else around you could do it for you, or just let us know and we'll pull the information from the uh, health screening records that we collected as you entered the building today. Uh, don't forget, the church office is open during the week, so feel free to call us with any questions or needs that you may have. Uh, and for those watching by recorded video, if you feel inclined to uh, contribute any tithes or offerings, you can do so by either dropping them off at the office or mailing them to the church uh, at the address that you should see at the bottom of your screen or did earlier anyway. Um, the yellow floral arrangements Okay. are given today to the glory of God in celebration of their 60th wedding anniversary on August 27th by Ralph and Twyla Heinzman. Uh, the large floral arrangements are from the wedding yesterday of Savannah Hensley and Jack Kilburn. Jock. Jock Kilburn, sorry. Uh, the Board of Missions is still looking for a food pantry coordinator. It could be either one person or maybe a team. Uh, to conduct the business end of the food pantry ministry. Uh, please contact the church office if you might be interested in helping out with that position. We've been looking for a long time and uh, we need to have that filled. Uh, we also have been holding prayer meetings by telephone conference calls on Thursday evenings. Uh, again, contact the church office if you're interested in participating in uh, those prayer meetings. Operation Christmas Child has started it involves creating shoe box gifts filled with toys, school supplies, and hygiene items for children around the world in more than 150 nations. Uh, the project delivers not only the joy of what, for many kids, is their first ever gift, but also gives them a tangible expression of God's love. Shoe boxes with instructions can be found in the North Face to be picked up. Uh, let us start our morning worship by listening to scripture found in Psalm 138. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart before the gods. I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. When I called, you answered me. You made me bold and stout-hearted. May all the kings of the earth praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is on high, he looks upon the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes, with your right hand, you save me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me, your love, O oh Lord, and yours forever. Do not abandon the words of your hands. Bless this holy scripture today. Now let us join our voices together in praise to the Lord by singing the hymn, We Praise Thee, O God, Our Redeemer. Oh God, our Redeemer. 
God of our fathers, we bless thee through joy, storm, and tempest. Our God, thou hast been when peril overtake us, thou wilt not forsake us, and with thy help, O Lord, life's battle. maker of heaven and earth, we gather today in your name. We come as living sacrifices to offer you our worship and thanksgiving, our praise and our prayers. Come among us, living Lord. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, transform our hearts and minds so that we may recognize your presence, hear your voice, know your will, and walk in your way. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. It, it is wonderful to be with you again this morning to come into God's house to worship. I am thankful for the opportunity I had this past week to be with my extended family in Ohio for just a few days. And as many of you know, it is so amazing to watch the progress as grandchildren grow and develop their unique personality. I made my daughter take a couple of pictures before I left to make sure that I could prove I was there. This is Amelia who is two now. And yes, she has, uh, has a personality and wants her way. No one ever knew another two-year-old like that. This next one is little Miss Melody, who is five months, five and a half months now. But they are pretty special young ladies, and it was great to be with them for just a few days. And by the way, this next picture, I just needed to show you that Rebecca is there too. And I went to visit her. Uh, she's enjoying her time with the girls and also the grown-ups in the house. Uh, she occasionally puts up with them. She'll be back here in Dover around the 1st of September. And um, it has been a joy for her to be there and to share time with them. This week, you may have watched a little bit of TV, the first of two political conventions. Such exciting entertainment, aren't they? Um, it's quite different to watch without all the hoopla. I used to enjoy watching because of the big arenas and all the, the bands and the music and the, the funny hats and, and the campaign buttons and the way people would dress. But this was a much more reserved presentation and this coming week will be interesting also to see how the next convention goes. Many of you watch, many of you are unconcerned and say, please get it over with. I understand. But it will be an interesting time for us. We pray for those folks who are gathering in different places and are having to travel. It's not an easy time to do that. Many of you received the news by email, or maybe you have shared it back and forth this morning that our friend Anna McKinney passed away this morning. Um, her son Carl 
and I were texting back and forth, and he said that certainly she is finally at peace. Uh, there will be a graveside service for her in West Virginia, and as he said, there will be no viewing with the COVID restrictions, but later on, he wants to plan a memorial service here for her so we can remember her here where she spent so much time over the years. But we have come here this morning with a common purpose of worshiping our God and we come in love for God and for one another. As we pause to pray this morning, we know that this coming together and lifting our prayers as a congregation is a vital part of our worship. And as I pray aloud this morning, I hope that you will lift your prayers, your petitions, your praises to God as we go to prayer. Let's pray together. Gracious, loving God of hope, we come to you this morning with our hearts filled with joy for the privilege we have of being here with one another in your presence. We are also thankful for each one who is sharing this time online, and we welcome them as a part of our worshiping community today. We come, O oh God, to give you thanks for your love for each of us and for everyone beyond the walls of this building and even beyond our homes. For God, each person is one of your children and like us has been made in your image. We ask today, O oh God, that you'll allow us the privilege of acknowledging and showing your love your love to all those whom we encounter each day. It's not easy. There are times that we know that we would rather do something else, but you will give us the courage, the strength, the willingness to step out and speak up on your behalf. God, our world across the world and even in our own country is troubled and divided but you are the one to whom we can all be drawn and to whom we can look for the peace that is needed in our community, in our country, and even in those places of chaos around the world. God, this week we pray for those on the West Coast where the weather has been so dry. We ask God that you bring a quenching rain that will extinguish the fires that are raging across California. This weekend, we pray for those in the path of tropical storms Lara and Marco that are making their ways across the Caribbean and across the islands and into the Gulf. Gosh, there are so many in the paths of that storm. And we pray for them as they wait and as they watch. God, with with a thousand people a day dying across our country from COVID-19, we, we pray for families, we pray for healthcare workers, we pray for others who are affected with this virus each day. Bless those who are serving, give them strength and stamina. For those who have lost a loved one, give peace and comfort, O oh God. We remember today your servant, Anna, whom you welcomed home today. I said this morning that she waited to Sunday to go to church, and she is in your presence today, O oh God, and we give you thanks for her and her life. We ask you to be with Carl and his family as they mourn the loss of mother. God, we thank you today for friends and family who are a part of the military, wherever they might be. We know of some that are in the Army, many who are in the Air Force, others who serve in other branches, Coast Guard and wherever. 
But God, we know that you are with them always. We ask for your protection. We ask for you to be with them each day and provide the peace that is needed wherever it is that they are serving today. Oh God, we ask today that you forgive us. We try. We try, oh God, but we are human. Forgive us, fill us, use us to be your servants in this world. And Lord, hear our prayers today because we lift them to you on high. We lift them from our hearts. You know the concerns. And just this moment of silence, oh God, hear our prayers that we lift to you. Thank you, Lord, for hearing. We know that you will respond in your own will. But we ask, O oh God, that we may be yours. As we know that in love you sent your Son, Jesus, to us and for us to teach us and to redeem us. And it is in his name that we pray today. Amen. We are going to sing a chorus this morning. His name is wonderful. I knew you knew that anyway, right? But we will sing this chorus through all four, five, six. Oh, let's, let's do it twice for good measure. Is that all right? Let's stand as we sing this one. Don't sing too joyously and exuberantly, but uh, if you are able, stand and join us. Um, for some of you that don't know our tradition that we have done for years here since we have been in this blindfold, uh, masked state, take a look around and see who's here this morning. You know those folks on the back row snuck in when you weren't looking? And then you can see those folks back in that corner and over here and maybe you can catch them outside or in the narthex afterwards. But let's sing together. the great 
Thank you so much. And be seated, please. What a testimony that song is for us as we share it together. Let me begin this morning. Generally, I would do a nice long introduction and then find the scripture somewhere. But let me begin this morning and set the stage by reading a passage of scripture that gives us plenty to ponder. There could be multiple sermons that would come out of this, and you can't imagine how many different directions I wanted to or wish I could go. But hear these words today from the 16th chapter of Matthew, verses 13 through 20. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he looked at them and said, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and where, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then, then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. May God bless to our hearing the story of Jesus with his disciples this morning. A friend of mine posted this on Facebook. She was a seminarian friend of mine from a number of years ago, but she says, seriously, reading the news just makes me so angry, but I feel like I should read the news to stay informed. I guess she just likes being angry, but that's the way it is these days. Personally, I'm having a difficult time with what I see and hear in the news, especially about labels given to different faith groups who are said to be supporters of one politician or another, there seems to be a litmus test of whether one is a real or a good Christian depending on your political persuasion. You can let that soak in. I'm probably not going to go back there much after this. But I want you to know that as I read this scripture passage over and over this week, even when I was on the plane back and forth, I began to hear the questions that Jesus asked the disciples in a different way in our own context instead of those sitting on a hillside with Jesus. Reading through Matthew as he describes these stories of Jesus it's like reading a travel log. He places Jesus in a particular location and then opens up the story for us in that place. He's in a boat or he's on a mountain or he's along the road. Last week he was in the district of Tyre and Sidon in the previous chapter. And now in this part of chapter 16, we are told that he has come to the district of Caesarea Philippi. Matthew wants to set that for us. But then we find that this is a teaching moment. Many of you might remember that your best teachers, and some of you out there are teach, former teachers, but the best teachers were the ones who didn't give all the answers, but asked good questions that made you think. This is what Jesus was doing as he was with his disciples. 
don't know whether you noticed that Jesus went from a general question, as you see on the screen, who do people say that the Son of Man is? He was saying, as you have been among others, what have you learned? That's the easy question to answer for them on that occasion, and maybe even for us today, because we hear many descriptions. The disciples answer that some people say that he is John the Baptist. Others declared that he is Elijah, and still others claim that Jesus is Jeremiah or some other prophet. In other words, even the people that they were hearing conversations from, they didn't agree. Their answers were that people identify the Son of Man with dead prophets sent by God who did miraculous deeds, those who stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with kings, who delivered to them either words of doom or words of hope or stood in opposition to them. But still, they are all dead men. Maybe they were saying that they think Jesus is one of these reincarnated prophets. Well, see, then Jesus, with these friends of his around him, goes from the general question to the one that is very personal and particular. He looks around to them and says, but who do you say that I am? That's a question that makes us stop and think. Who do we, you and I, say that Jesus is? How do we describe Jesus to someone who has never heard of him before? While the others were silent, of course we know the reputation of Peter, but Peter's the one who speaks up. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Is that our answer too? Sometimes if actions speak louder than words, have you ever heard that phrase before? We've tried to instill that in children, in your classroom, or wherever. But do our actions confess that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God? Or would they testify that like what others said about Jesus, that he's a good man, he's a great man even, and he's an example to follow, he's uh, someone to be inspired by, you know, like the prophets of old. For so many people, there is a gap between the words that are confessed on a Sunday and the lives that are led the rest of the week. It's not intentional. In fact, most of us would want the words from Sunday to align with the rest of our lives and actually matter in the way we see and treat others with God's love day in and day out. But Jesus looks back to Peter and blesses him for his response. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. And here's the key line that informs and affirms Peter's confession. Flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven Yes, God was at work in the life of Peter. Oh, we know, again, the rest of the story. He would mess up later, but in this moment, God was at work, and we know that in our own lives, God would be at work later, too. So I guess my question for this morning is this. Who do you say Jesus is? For you, is Jesus an inspiration, a teacher, a mentor, an example for how we are supposed to live? If we answer like Peter that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, I wonder what we actually mean when we say 
that Jesus is the Messiah, is the Lord. It's really hard to put into words sometimes that we can understand and that we can share with others. So we come up with titles, we come up with formulations and all the rest, trying to get at the mystery of what God has done in and through Jesus. And we have to be careful that our description for Jesus doesn't keep the God of love and the God of grace at an arm's distance. We want instead to embrace Jesus as God alive and working in our lives every day. Know this, Jesus asks us this question, who do you say that I am? But he asks it not for his sake, but for ours. He doesn't need to hear that. I think he may know who he is, but he wants us to be able to know and to define and to be able to declare who Jesus is in our life. We want to get caught up in the power of his love and his life. It's all about who we are willing to be. And remember, as we view each day how Christians and even you and me are being judged as we choose sides or loyalties in this world, whatever that may be, we need to know that we are not to be empowered by flesh and blood. But instead, we are to be empowered. We are to be encouraged. We are to be inspired and led by God the Father. So how do you answer the question this day? When Jesus asks you, who do you say that I am? If I was the good teacher today, I would say, take that question home as homework, and next week we'll talk about it when we meet again. But ponder that as God works with you and within your heart and life. Who do you say that I am as it relates to you and your life? God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the blessings that have surrounded us in so many ways. We thank you, God, that as your church, your people meeting in this place, and those who are at home or wherever they might be watching, we thank you, God, that you have shown your love to us in such a very special way through your Son, and yes, oh God, he is your son living in our hearts. Lord, we thank you for such an amazing grace, an amazing love that you have sent to us. And we thank you that we can share that with who we are, with how we treat others, with how we look at the world around us. Help us not to judge, but help us to love in your name. For it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. As I shared, I could have gone with four or five or ten different sermons from that short text. There could have been the piece about Peter as the rock on which the church would be built. It could have also been on that last line that said, don't tell anybody that I'm the Messiah. There is so much for us to see in the scriptures. But remember the question. Who do you say that I am?
Our closing hymn this morning that we will sing is The Solid Rock. And many of you know this from days gone by, but the chorus is simply, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. I would ask that we stand together as we sing, if you are able, and join me in singing. There are four verses to this, but join us as we sing this praise to God this morning. Let's stand. Thank you each one for being here. I know some are out in the narthex already, but may God bless you this week as you go from here, seeking God and finding him in all that is around you. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.